So hello and welcome back. We are here with one of my good friends from Canada, okay, Merrick. And so is it Carol is your wife? I know, Carol's actually my brother. Yeah. Okay. And just how'd you come up with the name crew? I know you told me a long time ago. Can you tell me that one more time? Yeah, definitely. So yeah, the, the crew was actually started by uh, myself, my two brothers, yeah. and two of our friends who are also brothers. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a, a family business. And so our last name is uh, Krupa. Krupa. So we are the K-R-U. And then their last name is Beccarelli. So they are the V-E of crew. Krupa. So that's how we kind of came about that. When, when we first launched uh, our uh, Kickstarter for the Sifter, we had a little bit of a different name back then, but it, it was more geared towards just the Sifter. We wanted to have a kind of a, a more holistic company name. So we, we ended up with Crew, which, which we love. And I think it's become a, a great name for us. Okay, so by the way, so you got started with the Sifter, right? So that, that is your first product. Yes. So I believe we had um, about late 2015, early 2016, okay. we launched the Kickstarter campaign with the Sifter. And uh, since then, that's kind of been one of our, our main staple products. And we've been on a journey to kind of innovate and create new products that are not just like a, a, our own take on something or put a logo on something something completely different that adds value to the industry. And a lot of the products are stuff that we are coffee geeks, coffee nerds, and, and we yeah. like certain things. And we're like, oh man, I, I wish I had this, but it doesn't exist. So then we make it for ourselves and we hope other people will enjoy it as well. So it's kind of, it's nice being our own kind of demographic. Um, myself, my brother and the whole team, we love coffee. So we experiment and that's how we kind of come up and innovate, uh, whether it's through glassware or, you know, the Bruler that kind of came uh, as the, the next evolution of the sifter, where not everyone needs a sifter or, or kind of has the, the means to, to buy a whole set. So we had that, um, so that the, the Bruler here. <clears throat> and this has been very popular for us. And we actually have a, a free open source version of this on a okay. website that you can download and print. Uh, so it kind of gives you the those same grind size metrics from fine, medium, coarse. And uh, the, the whole goal with the sifter was to try to put uh, some kind of measurements and science behind grind size. So I remember like when, when I was getting into coffee, I went to an amazing specialty coffee shop and they're like, oh, yeah, they, they made this pour over. I bought the beans. I asked, like, how do I make this at home? That's and right. I was like, well, yeah, okay, we'll follow this recipe. Use, you know, 96 degrees Celsius water, yep. use 300 milliliters of water, 15 grams of coffee, brew it for three and a half minutes, and like a kosher sea salt grind. I so know. All, well, all these kind of metrics and measurements, and then sea salt. Exactly. Like, well, what does that mean? You know, yeah. my sea salt is maybe different than your yep. sea salt. So <clears throat> with, with the brewer, we're actually able to now have, you know, fine, medium, coarse, and definitive measurements on what those are. So now when you're following that, that recipe, you can say, well, use an 800 to 900 micron grind size or a 1600. So that's kind of where we're trying to give that kind of standardized language to the industry. Okay. By the way, people are just joining us right now. We are talking to Merrick from, how do you say your name properly? Merrick or? Yes, Merrick. Merrick. Okay, good. Uh, we are talking to Merrick from Crew, and we are going to tell you how to enter the giveaway. Okay. End of our uh, session. So very easy to enter the, and then you're going to give out what, two, two or three lucky winners. I'll uh, be three winners. Okay. Uh, three winners. So you, you could choose from either some of our, uh, espresso glasses yep. or from, uh, the kind of the, Your our, our latte glasses, glass. um, that we have different sizes, you know, from a Cortado all the way up to a, a 300 milliliter kind of large latte size. So you can choose from one, any one of those. Okay. So you stop, guess, by the way, someone told me, who, um, make sure grind medium fine, right? Sometimes medium fine or fine. I mean, that really bugs me a lot, okay? Because yeah. I have no idea what that means. So uh, pretty much what I'm go by the, my total extraction time, okay? Because obviously the longer the extraction time is the uh, finer, the shorter is the coarser. So if a recipe calls for, let's say, two and a half minutes, and I have to, you know, grind some point. You know, I start with a, a X point, and then I'm going to go up and down. Mm -hmm. So with the, your crook sifter, 
make that a lot easier to Definitely. come up with so, that. So you are already a little bit more advanced coffee okay. uh, user, right? So you know certain levers, like in the photography, sure. you could change yep. you know, shutter speed and ISO yep. and aperture. And in coffee, you could change grind size, water temperature, the mm -hmm. ratios, uh, whether it's like an AeroPress or espresso, there's different pressures. So you, you could kind of pull these levers to make the coffee yep. a little bit more sweeter, a little bit more balanced, mm -hmm. a little more bitter, depends your personal taste. But if you're just getting into coffee, then having a ruler, which again, you get for free on our website, you download it, and we, there's people that they laminate it. So it kind of gives you that kind of starting point, that reference. Um, or you can actually have like the, the stainless steel version of it, which has different like uh, conversions yep. on the back and uh, green bean hole sizes. So we want to make it a little bit more approachable and easier. <clears throat> so when you have like a Hario or a Kaya scale, that gives you, you know, the weight, it gives you the yep. time. And you have these amazing tools on the market that make creating great coffee at home so much easier. You know, <clears throat> starting with a, a good grind size and a good grinder, obviously. Um, as we always try to say, like you, you, if you have a, a, a blade grinder, that's one of the first things to do, upgrade to a, you know, a decent, even a hand yep. burr grinder, and then fresh coffee. Those two things will kind of get you started and off a really good point. path. And then following channels like yours and having instructional videos. And uh, there's so much content out there now that you can experiment. And, and coffee is very subjective too. Like you could like it in a very different way. So we never try to push. So even when we have like our, our grind size chart, I don't know if you can see this here. So the ruler comes with this kind of chart yeah. <clears throat> that shows you different starting points for if it's an AeroPress or Espresso. It's not a definitive, this is what you have to do. Because every bean is different, right? Exactly. If, right. if it's freshly roasted or if it's a month old or yep. if it's a light roast or dark roast, the extractions are different. So it's just a starting point <coughs> to kind of get, get you in that right direction. And then, you know, you can you can go up and down. And once you get a little more experience like you, you know, oh, this is a little too sour. I need to extract it a little bit longer. Or it's a little too bitter. I, it was a little over extracted. So we kind of have that <clears throat> that baseline to work from. Oh, so, okay. Okay, so I have to say that using the sifter, it's not a easy task, okay, I have to say, because once you get used to it, and once you get used to it, you're gonna get your workflow down. Mm -hmm. But the starting point, so when you start learning how to use a sifter to I'll be just, I'll just show at it. Maybe some people aren't familiar with the sifter. Yep, yeah, yeah, it'd be great. Do us that. There we go. So there, this is the, the sifter here. So it's yep. a three-tiered yep. sieve. So you have three levels and you put different size sieves in both levels. So for example, say you're doing a, a Kalita wave and you wanna yep. have a 500 to 900 micron size. So when coffee extracts, it goes from that sour, sweet to bitter. And you're yep. trying to extract everything that kind of sweetest potential. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to do when you have this crazy distribution of, of coffee yep. grind. And that's why having a good grinder, like like a niche or, or one of those uh, mm -hmm. nice burr grinders, <clears throat> it gets that grind distribution a little more even. So it makes it easier. But now, say calibrating that grinder, or if you say have a, um, you know, a Hario hand grinder, which mm -hmm. is a great start, but it's not up to the par where maybe it gives you that competition level quality. That's right. You can actually put in, say, a 1,000 micron sieve on top and... This is a, say, 350. Yep. And now, when you have that grind distribution bell curve, <clears throat> putting in the different sieve sizes, you're, it allows you to cut off that bell curve. You can make it very narrow, or you can make it very wide and just get rid of those boulders and those fines. That's right. And now you could extract just what's in the middle. Yep. Or what I do is I actually say for like an AeroPress, I do a sequential brew. So first I put in everything that's on top. Yep. And I let that bloom for about a minute. Then I put in my main portion of, of grind, which is usually around 85% of, uh, yep. of the grind size, depending on the grinder and how, how wide you go. And I, I steep that the way I would, say, for two and a half minutes. And right before I plunge, I, I, I do an inverted method. I mm -hmm. throw in those fines, put the plunger in, flip it upside down, and start actually uh, extracting the coffee. So now I've actually extracted the top layer for, say, yep. three and a half minutes, the middle for two and a half, and the bottom for like 15 seconds. 
So you're extracting the particle sizes based on their actual size and extraction ratios. <clears throat> so that's kind of how, how we started. And it, <clears throat> you could go all the way up to 15 different that's uh, right. sieve sizes, yep. running from 1,600 microns to 200. And we also have green bean sizes. So for yep. uh, roasters, it was, it's kind of one of, one of the most uh, re <clears throat> requested products from us was having a uh, sieve that we have roasters in Canada that travel to origin. So they'll go to Colombia, they'll go to Ethiopia. Yep. And when you're buying green beans, a lot of times it's it's much easier to just to check quickly, oh, this is a, yep. you know, it's a double A or it's whatever size it is. So even on the, um, on the bruller here, we have sizes from 1164s to yep. uh, uh, 2064 of an inch, just to kind of give you that gauging point on, on green beans. I know because uh, actually I used that for a couple of months ago. I was doing my roasting session, mm -hmm. and the, before my roasting session, I used your the sifter using the the beans. So the theory behind that is you want to get a kind of evenly matched beans that you're going to be evenly roast. Okay. Yes. And then you don't want to have one small ones and one big ones. You know, it's not going to be evenly roast. So you're going to give you a different you know uh, tasting profile there. So, man. So, I mean, as you can see, we are talking about this. It's kind of like very, somebody really into coffee, right? Yeah. I mean, even someone. Is, <clears throat> excuse me. It's definitely, if you're, you know, like I love music. I listen to a lot yep. of music, but I'm not an audiophile. Like my cousin has a huge record collection yep. with, he spent too much money on that stuff. But then he looks at my coffee setup. He's like, well, I, that's crazy. How much money did you spend on that? that coffee awesome. becomes a hobby. Yeah. And you start enjoying and try, <clears throat> and you're trying to chase, you know that, you know it, to get it, you know 70, 80 percent with a good grinder and fresh beans, you can make great coffee at home. Oh yes. But if you're trying to really pinpoint certain flavor notes of a coffee, and you start becoming more interested in different origins and different uh, brew methods, like see, yeah, this is nothing. My basement is full of almost every brew method there is. Because I love it, it's it's become a hobby, and uh, like you, you, you can make coffee at home a lot easier than, uh, yep. than the way we do it. But it becomes that morning ritual, and it's it's something that I really enjoy even throughout the day. Taking that five ten minute break coming sure. downstairs, um, making that coffee and that latte art, and I'm still working on my latte art skills, but it's they're progressing. Uh, hey. By the way, so so this is uh, your propel glass, right? So pretty much right after you create the sifter, and then you come up <clears throat> this, correct? So this is the right after so, that. Well, we first started with uh, the exciting expire. Okay, exciting expire. Yeah. So, so exciting expire is this glass. Yeah. So this so is after we created the sifter. Uh, yep. We're like, you know what? Let's create a glass. Easy. A few week project. We'll have a glass. It'll be cool. Once we started learning about glassware and then the spirits industry and wine industry, it took us over a year of research and 3D printing and sampling and testing. And we're like, wow, there's something really here, which is, uh, it's been validated in the wine and spirits industry that yep. wine in a red wine glass versus a white wine glass. And even within those, there's certain subcategories of wine glasses. They're there for a reason because they actually manipulate the tannins in the in the wine and they impact that flavor. So when we started pouring coffee into different wine glasses, it was this huge disproportion in taste. So like, well, this tastes a lot sweeter. This is a lot more bitter. So through that research, we created those two kinds of glasses, um, which is kind of like, this is say like your, your red wine yeah. glass yeah. and your white wine glass. So the same exact coffee in these two glasses will taste differently. And it's not just like a, a mind trick. This glass has double the surface area as this one. So the fill line is right up to here. So our intention was you brew coffee into a carafe, you know, whether it's one of our peaks, so it's 300 milliliters yeah. or the Evoke is 600 milliliters. And these hold five ounces, so 150 milliliters. So one of them is to slow down the whole drinking process. So you, you brew your coffee into a craft, you pour half into here, you'll swirl it, you'll smell it, and the dynamics of drinking coffee changes. So now in this coffee, in this glass, 
because there's more surface area, the tannins in the coffee will oxidize. As yep. they're exposed to, the, uh, to air, they'll oxidize. So you'll reduce the bitter notes. And it's similar like if you go swimming in the ocean and you come out and you, you drink fresh water. It tastes sweet. And yep. it's not actually sweet. It's the lack of salt in the water that makes your mind think that it's a lot sweeter. So the lack of tannins in this glass will make will perceive it to be sweeter. And in this glass, everything will taste a little bit juicier, more acidic, fruitier. So you can have um, pairings for different coffees in those different uh, glasses to enhance your preferred tasting notes. And after those glasses, we created the the propel so during the same time that uh, we were thinking of doing an espresso glass i got really into whiskey and scotch mm -hmm. and bourbon and i started learning that the glass actually plays a really big role not just in taste but how you drink it yep. so say if i pour you uh bourbon in a shot glass you'll take it and you'll almost instinctively you'll just like shoot it back but if I put it into a, a Glencairn or like a, a Snitzer glass, you, you'll hold it differently. You'll swirl it. You'll smell it. You'll sip it. You, you enjoy that whiskey or that beverage longer. So that was kind of one of the key things we wanted to do with espresso is that, you know, my whole routine takes a while to make that shot of espresso. And I wanted to enjoy it a little bit longer. So we wanted to have a double wall base to keep the temperature more stable. We wanted a single wall rim at the top yep. so for, for the lip, the mouthfeel, it's a little bit more delicate and it's nicer. The shape makes you instinctively want to hold it like this. So you're kind of swirling it and sniffing it. And we added these three fins inside. So as coffee extracts, it stratifies into different layers. So ideally, you're supposed to take a spoon and swirl it. Most people they'll take the little the little espresso cup and they'll try to swirl it, which doesn't really yep, do exactly. anything. Exactly. Yep. This is it. So I mean, this is more like traditional Italian style, right? Yeah. If you go to a coffee shop, you order espresso, they're gonna give you this, chug it, done. Okay. Yeah. But it, like you're saying, is you want people to enjoy the espresso. Exactly. So take your time. by having these fins here and just the shape of the glass going out. As you <clears throat> swirl it, that centrifugal force will lift the espresso up the glass, destratify it. The oils and the crema will actually coat the inside of the yep. glass. So now, when you're drinking, your nose is fully immersed inside that glass, and more than 80% of taste comes through your olfactory senses. So, if you're increasing aroma and what you can smell, you're actually increasing what you can taste. So th this has been, it's my favorite glass and uh, I, I use this for everything from espresso all the way to now whiskey just because I like it. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna pull the shot right now. Okay, I'm gonna pull the shot and then I'm gonna half goes to the regular glass, half goes to crook, okay? And then let's see what I'm gonna experience. All right, I'm gonna put you on the spot here, Mary. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm using the, I'm, I'm just using just classic, like Italian blend here, espresso, and... So what kind of coffee machine you got over there? Sorry, that was a bit loud. Can you repeat that? So why are I making coffee? Can you show us your uh, coffee bar there for a second? Sure. So this is um, the San Remo Cube. Okay. It's, uh, it's been one of their first uh, prosumer home entries, which is, it's a commercial unit, but it's a single boiler. So uh, it can be plumbed in. Uh, it's been a, a great machine for us um, to match. There's a, a Niche Zero. We have a uh, W, or this is a distribution tool. I love this thing. It makes the puck prep so much easier. So what is you, that one? when you plunge down, the, the needles come out. Um, okay, so then, you uh, have the so you have the Duomo eight, right? Yeah. Okay, so I have the the fake Duomo eight. Okay, kind of like one of the Duomo eight from uh, Amazon. So you know, <clears throat> I mean that that's the thing about the kind of like innovative product, right? 
you know, I mean, I hate to say, but, you know, the, the rise of Amazon, okay, rise of Amazon, and you're going to see a lot of similar products popping for the kind of like somewhat lower price, okay? I mean, Duomo 8 come out what, a couple of years ago. They are selling for over $200. And the Amazon coming along, and, you know, the companies out there, they make something for a fraction of the cost. So how, I mean, so which means as an inventor like yourself, you have to be always one step ahead of these people. Yeah. I, mean, how, I mean, how do you balance that, that dynamic? Because at some <clears throat> point, you know, they're going to catch up, right? They're going to catch up and that they're going to take your market share away, which means, you know, you need to come up with newer products to go even ahead of these people. And, yeah. and so we, we try to stay ahead of one with through yep. intellectual property. We have uh, patents on these products, uh, whether they're utility or design design patents. Uh -huh. it, unfortunately, it's it's part of uh, the industry and in any industry. I know uh, yep. that people will copy you, and unfortunately, that initial innovative design. It's like I said, those two glasses. It took us over a year of design, development, testing, prototyping to come up with that, not just the idea, but a, a viable product that we can sell to build the market and the advertising behind it. So that costs a lot of money. And then you have somebody that comes along and like, oh, they're selling well on Amazon. Let's just yep. copy it and create a cheaper version of that. They, they had no money invested in research development and, and they kind of piggyback off the success of another company. Exactly. And it, it happens, unfortunately, all the time. Um, but like you said, we, we continue to evolve and e innovate. Uh, yep. Next year, we are planning to launch a few really great new products that I uh, can't share right now, but maybe once they're out, we'll definitely do another live and uh, we can go over them. You know, it's, I mean, it's a lot of secrets in the coffee industry. I'm, I'm telling you, a lot of secrets. Okay, so I got two shot pull, okay? One from regular classic cup, the espresso cup, and then one from crew. So with this uh, classic, you got to stir it. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, they recommend because the crema is really sour anyway, just like stir it like this. So, I mean, that's what we do, right? Mm -hmm. There you go. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Okay. Uh, kind of like dark chocolate notes, medium body to it. Uh, a little bright to the end. So, with the crew glass, I'm holding like this. I'm just. just Swerve it, mm -hmm. just like so. Yeah, because you the, the, like the, the, the coffee actually rises, and yep. a lot of that is coated on the inside of the glass. Correct. And then also you got that fin. That's the why you got that three fins, right? Yeah. 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 So that's the. Yep, the three fins right inside, so you don't have to stir it. Okay. So kind of like uh, the fins are stir it for you. Okay. Here we go. Wow, see, it's, it's, it's that felt like mind trick, but it's more uh, more brighter, more balanced. It's kind of hitting the mouth too, the smell, yep. the yep. aroma. Um, the, the human mind is definitely susceptible to a lot of yep. different influences. Uh, and there's been research done, even the music played in a coffee shop, the colors <clears throat> around you, they kind of influence your mood and your taste buds. And it's not a like a hocus pocus kind of thing. Like it, it legitimately, like the whole placebo effect of taking a blue pill or a red yep. pill, and one is just you know uh, sugar, and the other one is actually a drug. The human mind can perceive things dramatically different. So just the way you know you were holding it, you were swirling it, you'll drink it a little bit slower, you'll yes. enjoy it a little bit more. Yep. And we spend so much time and money on these amazing setups and the coffee and learn about the roasters and buy freshly roasted coffee. We want to continue like our, our whole thing. And we keep saying like, we're, we try to elevate the whole coffee experience. So every step along the way, you know, you have that routine, you're weighing out the beans, you have them fresh, you have your, your, your kind of whole setup dialed in. And then that last step, that more tangible visceral step of consuming it, we feel that it was kind of lacking 
and uh, the whole traditional Italian way, which is great. I've drank coffee most of my life that way. I think is doesn't do justice to the kind of specialty coffee beans and the whole industry that we're we're in right now. I know because I mean you you are absolutely right because people are spending thousands and thousands of dollars on the equipment and grinder and the the final finished product we put just a plain cup like this right mm -hmm. plain cups or some kind of mug mug from your vacation spot there yeah so instead you come up with like a cup like this like cup like you are inspired and excite. Yeah. So I mean so again, so so a couple of months ago I went to the competition, okay, for the Brewers Cup competition. And I use your uh this cup right here uh for the my judges and I pretty much I bring out all the gadgets, okay. In that competition I bring out everything. Uh, unfortunately I did not make the cut, but still. So again, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, how real, okay, here's the, is, is there any of coffee shop as you know of use your cups? Any coffee? Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I, I don't know the names of my, of, uh, my heart, but if you go on Instagram and you're scrolling through, yep. you'll see a lot of cafes Good. posting photos of coffee being served. A lot of times they'll actually have both glasses on a little wooden tray Good. with a card. So if you go to um, like a brewery or a wine yep. tasting, a lot of times you'll have the, the tasty notes and be presented a little way. Uh, I know uh, in, in Asia and in Singapore, there, there's fantastic cafes that kind of take that whole coffee experience to another level. And, yep. and they take so much care as to make sure that they're serving coffee in the appropriate vessel, whether it's paired by the breeze, they're saying, oh, this coffee tastes best and this and this is how they serve it. Or they give you that kind of tasting option in two glasses and let you experience how oxidization, how, yep. you know, the, the way, the aroma is captured the same way, like a, with a wine glass. Also, you don't fill a wine glass all the way yep. to the top. You know, you fill it ju just enough to the bottom so you have that headspace, which is crucially important to make sure that that aroma is captured. And in um, spirits and wine, you have that alcohol, the ethanol, that yep. evaporates and it takes all those volatile compounds, and, and that's what you're kind of smelling. Here we have heat and the water vapor as it's as it's evaporating, and you're smelling it you get this amazing aroma and it's it's something that you i recommend even if you don't have our glasses you could try it yourself um with different wine glasses or different cups yep. at home make sure you cool the coffee down first because we've broken many a wine glass wine oh, yeah. coffee in there and, and the glass is not designed for that uh, all, all of our products are made of borosilicate so it's, it's a laboratory grade glass that you can take it out of the freezer and pour boiling hot water in there and it doesn't have that kind of expansion contraction so it won't have that thermal shock so by the way, so I mean, people are just joining us right now. We are talking to Merrick from Krupp, uh, talking about his glass, and and we are going to talk about the giveaway, uh, giveaway in a few minutes. <clears throat> by the way, so you are still doing your Black Friday special going on now? Yeah, okay. yeah, our Black Friday sales going on now. Uh, I think I believe still everything is in stock. The, the Excite Inspire sold out, unfortunately, um, but so, we do have the Excite Excite and the Inspire Inspire package together. Um, we have the espresso glasses, the sifters, yep. uh, our new uh, latte glasses. So uh, these are very cool. When we came out with, uh, I, I basically, I designed this for my wife okay. because she likes milk drinks. I'm lactose intolerant, so I, I only yep. drink espresso. And when I started getting to that whole latte art world and creating a, a glass, we found that a lot of these cups, when, when you change... You know, and you have a, a normal cup and you change the surface area as you're pouring, that, that top surface area can distort your art. So we want yep. to make sure that we create a glass that has a spherical bottom. So when you have that base of espresso at the bottom, as you're pouring and tilting the cup this way, everything stays level. It's double walled. So it, it has that, it, it keeps the coffee hot a long time, especially yep. when you have that layer of uh, milk foam on top. So we have... Uh, I believe on the box there's some kind of uh, so yep. gives you some kind of idea of that spherical bottom. And then we have uh, four different sizes from uh, the Cortado, so 150 milliliters 
200 milliliters, 250, and 300 milliliters. And those have been um, very popular for us, so we're, we're okay, very so, happy. So by the way, so <clears throat> make sure you get the, all the right tools, but it's all, it's ultimately, is the operator behind the cup, okay? Yeah. So practice, all right? So I mean, it's a cup like this is gonna be enhance your skills, right? It's not yeah. gonna make you any better, but it's gonna be give you the give you a fighting chance, okay? They give you. Oh, definitely. I've I've seen amazing baristas, you know, using a paper cup that they just pinched, and they that, that's their their latte art cup, and yeah. they make way better art yeah. than I do. So, by no means is this going to make you the best latte artist in the world, but it gives you the tools, right? So the the, the correct milk pitcher. The correct milk, the way you steam milk, is by far kind of like the most important. Your espresso base and you know how to set it and how to draw it. It's that is you know, th there's a reason why they have latte art competitions because it's not easy. Yeah. And so, do you have any like tr uh, travel plan for you guys? Do you do any kind of road shows or coffee shows, anything like that? And uh, not right now. We've been to uh, the SCA in Boston, in Berlin. Okay. Uh, you know, through, throughout COVID, unfortunately, a lot of that was canceled. But we we do plan to to go to different trade shows. Okay. Um, not not sure about ex exhibiting there, but you know, to walk the show to, to sure. meet people. We are still a, a very small team, so we're focusing on most of our our time is spent on product development. Yep. So creating, like you said, staying that one step ahead, and we don't want to just create you know the next X product with our logo on there. We want it to be new, innovative, and not just innovative for the sake of being innovative, but actually add value to the user, to the industry, and ultimately to ourselves, which is uh, coffee geeks, people who are enthusiasts about espresso and different kinds of coffee. Okay, so okay, so you got the new product coming up, what, 2023? Yes, the, the goal is uh, quarter one, uh, okay. maybe late, late Q1 of 2023. <clears throat> Um, and then there's going to be a, a few releases throughout the year, but that, that's going to be, I think, okay. one of our favorites and, and probably uh, the, the, the coolest thing we've come up with so far. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to tell you guys how to enter the competition. It's not a competition, so here's what's going to happen. Go to the, the Merrick, the Krug's Instagram page. I'm going to put the link down below, okay? Yeah. Go to his page, and then you're going to see me and Merrick's photos on it. I'm going to send him the picture of us and he just simply post, uh, just simply follow crook page and also some kind of thumbs up. Yeah, yeah, do the thumbs up, okay? And yeah. then uh, crook team is going to pick three winners, all right? And then you are going to, uh, so you have an option for Propel or Imagine Glass. Yeah. And then and you don't have to follow me, and that's fine. Okay, it's all about crew today, so you just make sure uh, follow the crew. And also, I'm going to put their link down below as well. And don't forget, you got the 30, per, okay, up to 30% off, okay, for Black yeah. Friday special. It's up to, it's, I mean, it's yeah. not a 30% off everything, so up to 30%. We, we, would, we, love, we would love to do that, but unfortunately, shipping prices around the world have Crazy. skyrocketed over the last yeah. few years. So we're trying, we're subsidizing shipping and, and trying to make it like we, we haven't raised our prices ever. Like all, all of our, uh, like you know, the fellow companies around us, they're raising prices slowly but surely because they have to. So we're, we're trying to kind of eat that cost as much as possible, eat the cost of shipping while trying to give people, uh, you know, going to the Christmas season or gift season or just for themselves a, a little bit of a deal. So I, I believe the the propel are from thirty nine ninety nine. It's thirty one ninety nine. Thirty two so, bucks. Okay, so which means it's about about fifteen dollars each, sixteen dollars each there. Yeah. So I mean, so sixteen dollars each for prepare glass for forty two. Yeah, I mean, so this, I mean, this is one of my favorite espresso glass. It's really fun and fantastic. So I mean, if you cannot, if you if you're not gonna be the winner. Make sure to check out there. So this series goes through when? Up to what? Uh, I believe uh, till Cyber Monday. So Cyber not Monday. this Monday, but uh, the following Monday. And then uh, that'll be it uh, for then. Uh, and then our stocks are not that, they're not as high as we'd like them to be. Okay. You know, we're still, there's some supply chain constrictions. 
So even though we've we're trying to place bigger orders, unfortunately, um, we we don't have as much product as we'd like. So uh, now is definitely the best time of year to okay. to buy anything from from us. That was good, buddy. Hey, thank you so much for joining us this morning, and I cannot wait to talk to you next year for new products as yeah. well. Yeah, thank you, you for know, having yeah. me. And I definitely look forward to that. And then just make sure it goes to the uh, Krub's Instagram page. Look for post, okay? Yeah. Uh, next, hopefully next five, 10 minutes. Look for me and Merrick's photos. And then just go follow Krub's Instagram page and uh, do some kind of post so they know who you are. Okay, some kind of thumbs up or something. And then hopefully the, they're going to pick out three winners. Okay, Merrick, yep. thank you so much. I'm going to talk right. to you. Thank time. you. Have a great day. Okay, bye-bye. Right. So that's the Merrick from Crew. It's a lot of fun, okay? I mean, I love talking to uh, the people behind the scene, okay? People behind the scene there. And so I'm gonna be talking to another live streaming uh, this afternoon, all right? I think I'm gonna have really interesting, uh, if you are into Lapaboni, okay? If you are into Lapaboni, uh, I'm gonna go live with this person. I'm not gonna tell that person's name, but make sure to come uh, hang out with us. Uh, we're gonna go live, let's see, 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, or 2 p.m. Central Time, uh, 3 p.m. the Eastern, okay? So uh, should be a lot of fun, okay? Should be a lot of fun with talk. I mean, if you have Lapaboni, most likely you went to his uh, YouTube page. I did. All right, guys, I'm gonna see you guys next time, and if not, I'm gonna see you this afternoon.